Her Excellency Senator Banigo Ikwalobi Hari, Chairman, Senate Committee on Health, Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Imo State, Senator Hope, Your Excellencies here, Representative of Executive Governors here present, Honorable like to recognize that we have with us with the new but energetic Honorable Minister of State for Health, Dr. Iziak Adekule Salako. I'd quickly like to jump to the man who is wearing double caps, cap in the sense that he helped to meet wife what we are witnessing today and um, he's a strategic partner because we know education is important to what we're doing today by the grace of god he has moved as minister of state from the federal minister of health and social welfare to the minister of education welcome with me dr latuji alausa The father of it all, and um, who is here, and I'm sure this is a moment in his life when eventually he does write a book about how God has taken him. Today will be a chapter, I can assure you. Please let's welcome with us the coordinating minister of the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare. My brother, in whom I'm very proud of, Professor Mohammed Ali Pate. I'd also like to say that the administrative network of the Federal Minister of Health has been made possible and seamless. Um, maybe because I'm a woman, that's why I'll be a bit partial here, but I'm very definitive about it. That when you give a woman an assignment, she does it better. Well, Thank you, I, I expected a round of applause for that. Welcome with me, the Permanent Secretary of the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, Ms. Kachalom Shangiti Daju, MNI. Thank you. I'll go on because I have quite a, um, some moments to announce and introduce people here. But I'd like to say that everyone here is important. Everyone here has a role to play, um, including even the uh, security operatives, including members of the Nigerian media, you're all welcome. We all have an important role to play today, moving the health sector forward. I quickly also would like to recognize that we have de uh, development partners and indeed uh, credible partners that have stayed with us through the thin and thick of putting this together. I'd also quickly like to recognize that we have here WHO, UNICEF, we have um, uh, of Gavi, oh my God, Gavi. We have all members of the United Nations family that are here. Please, can you just rise up for recognition wherever you are? Thank you very much. Yes. Solid partners will recognize you. Quickly, I'd like to go to special advices to uh, His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. If you are here, please, can I uh, see you just by a wave? Thank you so very much. Uh, heads of agencies, especially uh, the Directors General of the NHIA, Nigerian Insurance Agency, I saw you a moment back, Executive Director, National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, and the young man, yes, thank you so much, and the young man who is leading the swap uh, um, territory, uh, Dr. Muktaka, thank you so very much. I, I like the uniform, I would have worn one if you, were, if you had given me one. <laughs> All right, I'd also, and NCDC, I saw him at the back, 
And I said, well, is he sitting at the back because he doesn't want to spread the virus? Or the <laughs> Thank you so very much. I also would like to recognize that we have uh, with us the uh, Governor's Forum, of which um, I'm bringing him to the very last because uh, the Nigerian Governor's Forum has become a veritable partner uh, in moving development forward. And we have the chairman, I think, who is making his first appearance uh, in a gathering like this with the Federal Minister of Health, Alaji Shitu. My brother, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Members of the Diplomatic Corps that have been partners in what we are doing, you're all very welcome. Directors from the Federal Ministry of Health and other directors here present, I'd like to say welcome. We are happy you are here. I'd also like to recognize that we have members of the CSO, CBOs, who are, are very, very interested in what is happening here today. I'd like to give you a very warm welcome. Now, before I... give special recognition to our traditional institution. They make it happen. Please, I need a very loud round of applause because they are doing so much that will ensure that we get to the of universal health coverage. I'd like to recognize His Royal Highness, Dr. Haliru Yahaya, Emir of Shunga, Kwara State, who himself is a medical doctor. Bagandoji, you're welcome, sir. I'd like also to recognize that we have His Royal Majesty, Igwe Samuel Ikechuku Asadu Ogadigide, the Igwe of Eden Ani. Igwe, you're welcome. I'd like to recognize His Royal Highness, Danladi S. Mayaba Maitangale. You're welcome, sir. Also, His Royal Highness, Kabiesi, Oba Dr. Olu Folani, Olu Kayode, Ogun, Soro, Alara of Ilara, Kabiesi. You're welcome. I know that members of the Nigerian media are also here represented. As I speak to you, we are on live broadcast in the major networks in Africa. So, you, everywhere in the world, if you are tuned in Africa, if you are tuned around, you can watch what is happening today. I haven't said that, and I do hope that I have recognized everyone. You're all welcome. The constitution of the, okay, oh, the chairman of Governors Forum, His Excellency, the executive governor of Kwara State, is not here with us this morning, but I'm sure he's monitoring us wherever he is. But standing in for him, and standing him very well is His Excellency, Senator Hope Uzodimma, who is representing the chairman and is the executive governor of Imo State. Your Excellency, welcome. And so we set the ship sailing now. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria prescribes that security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Evidently, the renewed hope agenda of Mr. President derives from the statutory obligation to implement the welfare agenda. Mr. President engage the best Nigerian pair of hands, those of Professor Mohammed Ali Party and his team to coordinate and drive the activities. And now Nigeria is getting the results. One of them is this event, the Nigerian Health Sector-Wide Joint Annual Review, the summary of the philosophy of the Nigerian Health Sector-Wide Approach is clearly cited in the slogan, it's for all of us. The implication of this is that we go forward from here, one plan, one voice, one goal. This means a clear departure 
from the previous culture of fragmentation of programs and interventions. This event is basically a review to look together at what we did, what we worked, what worked, what didn't, and how to do it better and get better results for Nigeria and indeed Nigerians. No wonder somebody said, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Your Excellencies all, honorable ministers, distinguished senator, captains of industries, all of us here gathered our royal fathers, partners, and other technocrats, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and of course, members of the vibrant Nigerian media. Good morning again, and welcome. My name is Mojima Kojola, and I'll be leading us through, and I hope that this will be a paradigm shift from where we were. I have been assured that it's not going to be a talk shop, but it's going to be an action shop. And so I welcome you and pray that the good Lord will lead us to that promised land. And it is on this hope for renewal, on the hope for strength and purpose, that I invite the permanent secretary, Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, to please give the welcome remarks. Can we please welcome her very, very warmly. Excellency, our special guest of honor and representative of the Nigeria Governors Forum, the Executive Governor of Imo State, Chief Hope Uzodima. You are welcome, sir. The Coordinating Minister for Health and Social Welfare, Professor Mohammed Ali Pate, CON, Minister of State for Health, Dr. Isi Aksalako, my dear Ebon, and Honorable Minister for Education. Dr. Tunji Alausa. Your Excellency Ma, the Chairman Senate Committee on Health, Dr. Ipalibo Banigo, our revered traditional rulers, directors of the ministry and heads of agencies of the Federal Ministry of Health, development partners, friends of Federal Ministry of Health, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the fourth estate of the realm, good morning. My job is to welcome all of you. My name is Daju Kachilum, Federal, uh, Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the first ever joint annual review meeting of the health sector, holding for the next couple of days. The Joint Annual Review provides a platform for health sector stakeholders to assess program performance, evaluate resource distribution, and review outcomes. This is with the aim to promote multi-sectoral coordination and set clear priorities for the upcoming year, ensuring that all stakeholders remain aligned to our national health goals. The sector-wide Joint Annual Review is particularly significant as it provides the opportunity to review progress in the health sector's performance under the sector-wide approach, which is being led by the national coordinator, Dr. Muntaka. In line with Nigerian health sector strategic renewal investment initiative priorities, focusing on key achievements on implementation provisions and processes. It is also an opportunity for us to review the preliminary findings of the annual state of health report and the Nigeria Demographic and Health Survey, NDHS 2023. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this meeting sets to strengthen accountability by way of tracking progress against set targets and goals, thereby holding stakeholders accountable and identifying areas of improvement. This, I believe, will reduce duplication of efforts, optimize resource allocation, streamline processes and enhance donor confidence. Over the past years, we have faced multifaceted challenges within our health sector. Yet, 
we have also witnessed rem remarkable resilience and innovation. The challenges have forced us to adapt quickly to ensure that essential health services remain accessible to all. We have demonstrated, I'm sure you would agree with me, our capacity to mobilize resources, develop new innovations, and collaborate effectively, all of which have been crucial in navigating these turbulent times. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as we commence review of our performance, it will be noted that key initiatives aimed at enhancing maternal and child health, combating infectious diseases, and expanding access to mental health services have shown promising results. It is imperative that we prioritize health equity and work diligently to close these gaps, especially among the vulnerable and the hard-to-reach areas through targeted interventions and community engagement. Furthermore, we are committed to investing in strengthening our health workforce. Our healthcare professionals are our greatest asset, and it is crucial that we continue to support their well-being and professional development. This includes providing training, resources, and a supportive work environment to ensure they can deliver the highest quality of care. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, let this meeting serve as a reaffirmation of our commitment to continuous improvement. We must embrace the spirit of learning, celebrating our successes while critically analyzing our shortcomings. As we review our progress and set our priorities for the coming year, let us keep our focus on measurable outcomes. We owe it to the Nigerians we serve to ensure that our efforts translate into tangible improvement in their lives. In conclusion, as we commence, please note that collaboration is key to our continued progress. Let us strive for a health sector that is resilient, equitable, and responsive to the needs of all individuals in our society. I want to thank the National Coordinator of the Sector-Wide Approach, Dr. Muntaka, DHPRS for putting all this together, Coordinating Minister and Minister of State, as I welcome you all once again and thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think I need a warmer uh, applause that has set the stage. During the um, recognitions, I left out the critical people that will ensure that these cascade to every nook and cranny of Nigeria. First, I'd like to recognize the Director General of NACA, Dr. Tokwe Lori. You're welcome, ma'am. Um, okay. I'd also like to give special recognition, and I want uh, everyone to applaud the good work that they are doing. Honorable Commissioners of Health from the 36 states and Monday Secretary of the FCDT. Can I have the Honorable Commissioners, please, let's stand up for recognition. Thank you for the good work. Thank you. Is Dr. Fulani here? Yes, and that, he leads the pack and uh, a very special recognition for them. Thank you, ladies. We are now going to Goodwill Messages. At the peak of polio vaccine crisis in Nigeria, a target was put in place that every child must be immunized. And we know the best way to get to them is through the traditional institution. And that came to life. And that's why today Nigeria can boast of having been able to eradicate to a certain level wild polio virus. We thank you, Your Royal Highnesses, for the good job you are doing. So, to kick off goodwill messages, we'll knock on your door. We're going to now invite His Royal Highness, Dr. Hali Ruyahaya, Emir of Shonga, who also personally was part of the people and partners who ensured that every child is immunized and that polio and other vaccine preventable diseases are contained in Nigeria. Thank you so much. Bagadoji.
Honorable Minister of Health, Honorable Minister, other ministers here, His Excellency, uh, Royal Highnesses, partners, let me stand by existing protocol. The day is long, and we've just started. I, I'm overwhelmed. I consider it a real privilege to stand and discuss this issue, which has been my life and been for how many years? In the year 2000, Nigeria's report on health was awful. We then sat down and, with, prompt, prompted by defeat, formed what they call Health Reform Foundation. And we went into what is the issue and went around South Africa, countries, even Ghana, where things were already working. And let's see, how do we adopt this? We formed little cells and also cross talk across our cells. We finally, uh, about after eight years, we got the review of the health, uh, health, um, um, health policy. We, in our crucible, started the health insurance. In our crucible, started many policies. But they remain policies in the crucible until they are aired. So we, uh, Mrs. Sopalebo was the chairman of the MPCDA. We had all the levers we could use. We wanted the health in Nigeria to get better. One of the greatest frustrations we had in all this is that health was segmented. When you do things in the federal, beautiful plants, then you go to the states, your excellencies do what they want. So um, we went on like this, staggered, then the issue of polio came in. By this time, a gentleman called uh, Pate, Dr. Ali Pate, was unknown, uh, had not been appointed as executive secretary. Well, I was privileged also to be chairman of the board. So I worked with him very closely. And I will tell you why I'm very delighted today. He's very organized, keeps time, and very productive. So we started getting, and now having been a chairman of Health Reform Foundation, having seen our vision, it was not difficult to now dovetail and see what we can do here. But primary care was really part of health. Eventually, um, polio wouldn't, wouldn't go. I, I recognize somebody from WHO here who was polio, the gentleman there from polio. Am I right? Please can just stand up for recognition to tell you that this solid history we are discussing. Now, Nigeria couldn't come on top of this polio problem. We became a pariah state. The story is long, I'll just cut it short. How do we get around this thing? Then somebody under him said, if polio is in the communities, and they are community keepers, and they are effective, why don't you use them? So he got into place a leverage of traditional institution coming to polio. Within one year, it crashed. And so why don't you keep that system going? And he was the origin of the traditional Northern, Northern and Southern Traditional Leaders Forum on Primary Health Care. He has achieved quite a while. Because of his performance, they wouldn't let him go. They made him junior minister. Then after a while, he left. I wanted to wander into politics. I wouldn't say more than that. He came back. Now they're looking, the, uh, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is known for human resource search. He wanted a minister for health. You can imagine what resonated with us when we had Ali Pate coming back as minister for circulate, I mean, sorry, coordinating minister for health. Why is that important? The greatest frustration we had in primary health care and in health was getting things to go past to the governors. When you get to governors, you know, I have my plan. But health has no borders. And that's why one health, one vision, one goal is the most important way to subscribe his role in trying to get health as one thing going. So I must congratulate him, uh, President Brenda Tendubu, for picking him, because he was, he's picked up a Gavi job, by far more lucrative than what we're doing here, than the hardship he's put himself. That is personal sacrifice. So we appreciate that. And that's what we are in today. So he has started this one here, and I think we are going to perform. Please, let's give him the cooperation he requires. Thank you very much. Okay. She was with us all along. <laughs> and thank you very much. Um, yes, thank you. We're going on now to the next speaker, Dave. Mark Conalog, who is the co-chair of the Health Development Partners Group. Thank you very much. I know 
he made very short remarks. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Great, that sounded like a challenge, um, and, and well done for pronouncing my name correctly, excellent. Um, so I will just make a couple of, of short remarks, and I, I won't go through why it is we need this vision for health sector transformation, or the approach that the coordinating ministers set out around the sector-wide approach. I think many people will, will do that through the day. But, but one error point that I would like to iterate is the importance of staying razor sharp focused on those health outcomes. The activities and the processes are of course key, but they're only key in terms of a pathway to achieving the impacts that we want on health within Nigeria. So we should challenge ourselves throughout today and we will do this as health development partners to, um, we'll do this as health development partners to make sure we keep returning to that and keep focusing back on what those outcomes and what those impacts are that we are trying to achieve. So when the minister first came to the health development partners early in his, his tenure, uh, we were very excited about the vision that he laid out for health sector transformation. And we were very excited about the approach that he laid out through the sector-wide approach. And we were excited about this because we saw this as a real opportunity to push forward for big change over a short period of time on the health outcomes and the health inequalities that exist within Nigeria. But as health development partners, you know, we have not been just clapping from the sidelines. We have also engaged in this process, and we've also supported actively this process. So we have pooled financing, and three partners have already made a commitment, but we have many more that are in the pipeline. We have opened up our data so that you can see where it is our resources are going, and that is really important, and one for holding us as health development partners to account, but also in order to enable us to engage in, in really thorough joint planning and coordination, both across health development partners and with government under their leadership. And of course, we have co-chaired and supported all of the TWGs and of the task groups, which have been instrumental in designing and developing the sector-wide approach within Nigeria. So on that point, I, I would also like to make a, a commendation to the Ministry of Health and the coordinating minister in particular, but also to Dr. Montaka as the national coordinator for the approach that they have taken for, to co-creation. Now, this has not just been words. We as health development partners have felt very much like we are in the same tent. We feel like we own the problems, we own the solutions, and hopefully we will also own the important results that will be coming soon. Um, and we are not observers within this, but also there is upon us as partners a commitment to be transparent and accountable and to invite constructive criticism back as well and to change and bend and mould and focus with that laser focus on, on health outcomes. But of course good intentions need good processes behind them and that is why the joint annual review is so fundamental to the approach that we have today. So my final point, and being very brief, is that this is the first joint annual review. So we will get a chance, obviously, to see the data on performance and to interrogate that and to think about the outcomes and how we could improve. But also we should view it as an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to build from this. And maybe we should view this as JAR.0 and we should come at this with an appetite to learn and to build on what's already been put in place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, another round of applause there from the Chair Health Development Partners Group. We're moving quickly. I'd like uh, to now call the Country Director, World Bank Nigeria, Indiem Diop. Uh, please appeal that we should please um, keep to time. Yes, please, I Thank beg. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Good. Uh, Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers and Commissioners, 
uh, distinguished guests, esteemed colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the World Bank is delighted to be here today to join hands with the governor. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, the World Bank is, is very delighted to be here today uh, to join hands with uh, the government of Nigeria and other partners in the first ever health sector joint annual review. We congratulate the government of Nigeria, not just for this milestone, but also on the overall vision for the Nigeria Health Sector Renewable, Renewal Investment Initiative. This initiative, which will be delivered through a sector-wide approach, has brought federal and state government and all partners together around a common vision and a set of common goals. We are all aware of the challenges Nigeria faces when it comes to the health indicators. As a newcomer, I was frankly very surprised by the numbers, which do not correspond with the status of Nigeria as the largest economy in Africa. And according to the recent uh, Nigeria Demographic and Health Survey 2023, there has been very limited progress on reproductive, maternal, newborn, and, and child health since 2018. In short, the data reveals that while we are all making good efforts, we should be doing more. Now, this data could not have come at a more favorable time for Nigeria. When the government, under the leadership of uh, Dr. Mohamed Pate, has set out its vision for crushing maternal mortality and increasing the coverage of essential health services. The compact, which kick-started the sector-wide approach, helped us to think strategically about how we can do more by channeling investments on the agreed com uh, common set of results and mo move collectively toward addressing them, especially in the regions where the burden is high and institutional capacities are more challenged. The compact also provides for a very good framework for collaboration, which is important in achieving the common goals that we have set for ourselves. Uh, the joint annual review allows us to review progress across many facets of the health system. Financing commitments, health system performance, health outcomes, and the overall behavior we have committed to. We commend the government for believing in the power of data for driving change. This is the best approach to shine a light on our performance and inform the prioritization of investment and efforts through annual operations plan and upcoming budget and spur subnational actions. Indeed, data-driven and evidence-based uh, policy making is not just a merely um, just a, a buzzword. It is the cornerstone of good governance. By grounding prioritization of investment and resource allocation in rigorous research and credible data, we achieve five things. Number one, we empower ourselves to make decisions that are well informed. Number two, we make decisions that are aligned with the needs and aspirations of the population. Number three, we enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of our interventions, ensuring that scarce resources are allocated wisely and our efforts yield maximum impact. Number four, we foster accountability and transparency, as was said earlier, allowing us to track progress, measure outcomes, and learn from both successes and failures. And finally, uh, it helps strengthen the trust in public institutions because citizens are more likely to trust and support policies that are grounded on data, fact, rather than opinion. The World Bank has thrown its full support behind this initiative and has, over the last uh, 15, uh, 15 months, worked very closely with the Federal Ministry of Health and other stakeholders and partners 
to design a set of disbursement link indicators under the human capital opportunities for prosperity and equity programs for result, HOPE, P4R, which has upstream and downstream arms incentivizing results in governance of the health sector and health service delivery. Uh, collectively, uh, uh, $750 million has been mobilized, and this is concessional financing from the World Bank, but also from uh, the Global Financing Facility Children Investment Fund Foundation and UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office to provide vehicle to foster stronger intergovernment relations between the federal, state, and local government for collective production of health. In other contexts, we have seen the power of such a result-based instrument in enabling a further uh, a focus on result and, uh, and achievement of, of good result. We hope to see a, a review of these DLIs in the upcoming uh, GARs. Um, uh, let, uh, in, in conclusion, let me just emphasize that accountability is key to the success of the swaps. And it is our sincere hope that this effort will be holding ourselves individually and collectively accountable through the JARS um, and reflection that catalyzes our concrete, concrete actions, shift behavior, cultivates trusting partnership and collaboration that are beneficial to the country. We are also great, greatly encouraged to see social accountability feature strongly through the partner, uh, the patient's voice survey. Uh, let me conclude because I, I, I see the pressure coming on my right side. Uh, the World Bank remains a committed partner and friend uh, for Nigeria. And on this journey, we look forward to bringing not just the financing, but also the global knowledge, the global experience, and the success uh, that we uh, uh, can draw on in Nigeria and outside of Nigeria for the success of this initiative. With that, I wish us all a frank and fruitful deliberations over the next few days. Thank you very much. Um, as much as I wanted to stop him, when I remember that he's from the World Bank, okay, let's let him read through so that we can have the benefits of uh, what the World Bank will bring to the table. Another round of applause for him. Um, at this point, I'd like to bring onto the microphone the WHO country representative, our brother, Dr. Walter Malumbu, whom I'm sure will do justice to two minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Moji. Honorable Coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Honorable Ministers, Executive Governor, Imo State, our Royal Fathers, colleagues, friends, partners, ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, good morning. It truly gives me a pleasure to bring you first the greetings from uh, Dr. Tedros, the WHO Director General, uh, who is here heavily represented by our Assistant Director General, uh, Bruce Alhoff, um, uh, the man that was referring to as the polio man, uh, together with other colleagues, but also to bring you the greeting of uh, Dr. Mueti, our regional uh, director, who, as you know, is transitioning uh, out after 10 years uh, in that role. And this very week, the RD elect is visiting Brazzaville and will be having a town hall meeting with him tomorrow. Um, so, uh, for this event, I'm really pleased to join uh, you all, uh, first of all, to express you know, my excitement. Uh, I remember when it all started uh, with co-creation. We were far from seeing it happening the way it's happening. It's bringing uh, hope and the prospect to change the narrative in Nigeria as far as health development is concerned. And I'm happy to also bring um, the salutation of our UN resident coordinators, together with my UN colleagues here, to support this event as a deeper reflection to what Nigeria will be next. I will not repeat what others said about uh, before me, 
but just to take the opportunity to acknowledge this unique opportunity to use this event as a means to become really serious about the Lusaka Agenda for Action 2023. And I would like to remind the five shifts of the Lusaka Agenda. The first one is to make a stronger contribution to primary health care by effectively strengthening the system and the global health initiatives have committed to effectively support the integrated service delivery aligned beyond one plan, one budget, one report, and one conversation. And we are here to take stock on that, where we are and where we head next. The Lusaka agenda emphasizes the need to play a catalytic role to help sustainable domestically financed health services and public health function. And the Global Health Initiative have agreed to accompany government, including Nigeria, by rallying beyond objective of financial and programmatic sustainability. The third action speaks to strengthening joint approaches for achieving equity in health outcome. And the Global Health Initiative adopted joint approaches to support, expand, and complement the reach of public and private sector providers, including community-led organizations deploying coordinated and targeted programming to reach the most vulnerable and marginalized communities. The four factions speak to achieving strategic and operational coherence. And the fifth one speaks to coordination of production of health and research and development, uh, strengthening the capacity data innovation. So a very, very good opportunity for all of us to contribute to that conversation. And I'm very happy to see my elder brother, the executive governor of Imo State. Uh, Imo State was the first state I visited when I came into Nigeria. And I was privileged that he conferred upon me the title of Oche Doha, which I'm still having. So thank you again as we look forward to contributing to the discussion during this event. Thank you, Auntie Moji. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we are moving on. I'd like to call on the acting country representative of UNICEF, Dr. Ronak Khan. Thank you. The Royal Fathers, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, I'm following the established protocol. It's an honor and privilege for me, yes, my height does not help, um, to be here this morning at this important occasion of the joint annual review of Nigeria Health Sector. I really, on behalf of UNICEF, would like to congratulate the government of Nigeria and the leadership of the health sector, but I really would like to mention Dr. Pate, Professor Pate. I was one of those privileged people who was in equity last year at the National Health Council when the vision was floated and then it became the sector-wide approach initiative in Nigeria. I also would like us to remember that it's not a program, it's an approach which brings all the partners together with one plan, one report, one budget, one monitoring system. And I hope that this will be discussed thoroughly in the joint annual review. The world is looking at Nigeria as well because the SDG 2 and 3 will only be attainable if Nigeria moves the needle. So Nigeria has so much responsibility and we as the partner multilateral agencies, we are behind you to support the initiative. The current efforts to strengthen leadership, investments, partnership and coordination and management and accountability will definitely support the development of a robust, resilient and sustainable health system essential to drastically reduce the uh, high burden of maternal and child mortality. I know that there is a lot of emphasis on maternal mortality, but I hope the new, newborn mortality also is tagged along with that. So on behalf of UNICEF, I really would like to reaffirm our commitment 
for women and children in Nigeria, and we are here with you. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you. We're moving on quickly, but at the beginning, um, he was supposed to be one of the first speakers, and at some point he will come and address the House because the coordinating minister has made it a standard that the members of the CSO must be part of the partners going forward. Dr. Mohamed Lekki is here. Initially, I was told he hadn't come, but he's here now. He came himself to show himself. Please, can you, uh, can you be upstanding, Dr. Lekki? You're welcome on behalf of all the NGOs and CBOs here present. At the appropriate time, you'll be uh, invited to talk. At this point, I'd like to um, call on uh, the Chief of Country Delivery Office, Gavi Tabani Maposa, please come to the microphone. Thank you for all the good words. You have very generous two minutes. Your, your Excellencies, Your Royal Highnesses, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please allow me to stand on protocols already established. Uh, when Antimoji said that uh, we will have to stand on the protocols established, I was concerned uh, because as a nervous public speaker, sometimes the protocols allow me to sec in when I get here. And I thought she took away my crutch. But uh, uh, that said, uh, you know, I don't know whether you have ever smelled rain when it is coming, when you are in a rural area and there is dust and the rain begins to come and it smells on your nose. Uh, that's the feeling I have, the feeling that it's about to rain, the feeling that change is about to happen and the change is afoot. And that feeling is a feeling that many of you will be familiar with. But I do want to tell you that uh, Gavi, the institution I represent, is the institution that cried a lot when it lost a minister, a coordinating minister Pate, when he was coming this way. But we quickly realized that that loss was indeed our gain. Because if we don't make progress in Nigeria, Gavi cannot make progress. So progress in Nigeria is Gavi's progress. And we are pleased that we have Minister Mohamed Pate uh, here. When we began and we understood his vision for SWAP, there was something going around the development partners. It was called the Pate effect. And the question was, how long was the Pate effect going to last? I think some of these effects are easy to last when promises are kept. This joint annual review is something that was promised to all of us. And so when we see it coming true, we get encouraged and we believe even more in this work. Gavi, uh, through its independent review committee, has already approved 195 million uh, that is aligned to the swap. And this is because we truly believe that the swap is something that we need uh, to support and lean uh, behind. I also must confess that some of these changes are not always easy. Uh, we are still adjusting, we are still learning what it actually means to submit to a wholesome process. And it will require some sacrifices and laying down our institutional logos for Nigeria to be lifted up. Because if our institutions stand and Nigeria does not succeed, then we have failed. So this joint annual review is a very important one for us to make sure that uh, we are country-led and we, we support Nigeria. In this goodwill message, what I want to say is that uh, Gavi is fully behind and ready to learn what we have to learn uh, with Nigeria. We understand the mutual accountability that comes with this, and we commit that we will do our part, and we ask other stakeholders to do their part. 
I hope you can smell the rain. There is an opportunity. There is a new day that is before us. Thank you. I like that bit. The new dawn. And when you're speaking to new dawn, I wanted actually to save her for the last, but I think it's about time, it's appropriate now, to say that we have with us our own daughter, a doctor, a proven woman of substance, who is the UICC, the Universal Cancer Congress, that will lead the world to the best for cancer victims and cancer affected and cancer treatment and prevention. Our own doctor, Her Excellency, the former, uh, the wife of the former governor of uh, Kebbi State, in her own state, a pediatrician, Dr. Zainab Atiku Bagudu. Congratulations. Please, can you rise for recognition? And can we please applause our own? Thank you. Going global, that's what Nigeria is doing. At this moment, please permit me to bring to the microphone Head of Department Global Fund, Mrs. Maria Kirova. She here? Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellencies, your Excellencies, your Royal Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen, let me stand on existing protocol. On behalf of the Global Fund, I am delighted and privileged to join this inaugural event that marks a very important milestone for the sector-wide approach, the leading piece of the Nigeria health sector reforms, driven by Professor Ali Pate, the Coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare. The Global Fund is a long-standing partner of Nigeria since the birth of our organization in 2002. We were among the first partners to sign the swap compact by the executive director of the Global Fund, Mr. Peter Sands, signaling our commitment to supporting this pivotal transformation in Nigeria's health. And just at the start of the year, His Excellency, the Honorable Minister, launched the uh, um, inaugural workshop to launch the grants of the Global Fund for the three-year period 24-26. The Global Fund has since been actively involved in three working groups, the healthcare financing, state advisory, resource coordination, and tracking. And through our involvement, we have witnessed the strong commitment and tireless efforts of invested by the SWAP Coordination Office, by the talented staff of the Federal Ministry of Health, by federal agencies, by our colleagues from the various partner organizations, and by the state representatives. All this to translate a vision and ambition into execution. So this is an, an opportunity for us from the Global Fund to thank everyone for the commitment, for the opportunity to work together, for the laser focus on outcomes, as well as for the progress made so far, including the innovations and including the resilience under multiple challenges. We continue to work actively with different st country stakeholders on many fronts, with NIH uh, to support health insurance in five states, uh, with the perspectives to expand the, to more states. With an, uh, we support the Nigeria Digital Health Initiative, the government strategy um, to unlock the healthcare value, as well as we contribute to the health security agenda through lab system support, through surveillance system support, through building the public health workforce. These are just a few examples. The Global Fund recognizes and appreciates the important role the SWAP and all health um, reforms will play and are already playing to improve service to expand access and to boost the health outcomes for the Nigeria population, including for the infectious diseases within the core mandate of the Global Fund, HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria, and to strengthen the primary health um, care system of the country and pandemic preparedness. We therefore reiterate our commitment to working with the Federal Ministry of Health and other partners under the leadership of the Honorable Coordinating Minister to accelerate the implementation of the SWAT. Within two minutes. All Thank right. you. Right. Thank you so much. Right. Okay. Thank you.
you very much. Our next speaker who is going to uh, actually give us an opening remark is the first official assignment that is carried out and coming at a time when the world is watching. A very lucky man. He is <laughs> the Honorable Minister of State for Health and Social Welfare, Dr. Iziak Adekule Salako. Please, let's welcome him very, very warmly. This is his first assignment, and um, the world is watching. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, first assignment, and I must say a very good one, uh, to lean on the back of something that has been cooked and well prepared and everybody is sitting on the table and here I am joining to eat in it. Thank you very much, Professor Pate and all the team, including my very good friend and the Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Tunji Alausa. Excellency, the governor of Imo State, Governor Hopu Sodima, who in my mind is here wearing three caps, is here as governor of Imo State, the hopeful governor of Imo State, is here as the leader of the progressive governors, and is also here representing the entire 36 state governors of Nigeria. I want to recognize you most Sincerely, and appreciate you, sir. My brother, the Coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare, I think probably the first in Nigeria. And I think if you are going to coordinate anything, the most important element to coordinate is the social welfare. Because everything we do, whether it is agri, whether it is water, whether it is environment, is about our welfare. So, congratulations, Honorable Minister, for the good work you are doing. Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Maruf Tuji Alausa, my sister, the Chairman, Senate Committee on Health, Permanent Secretary, Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Dadu Kacholom MNI, Directors in the Federal Ministry of Actually, I wrote environment here, so I need to <laughs> I need to trust it quickly. In the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, head of agencies and CEOs, our national coordinators, project coordinators, especially the man who is coordinating this system sector sector wide approach, Dr. Mutunga, honorable commissioners from all the 36 states of Nigeria, DG Governors Forum. Our royal fathers, your eminence, your royal majesties, directors, and staff of the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, our partners, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I am very delighted to be here to deliver these opening remarks at this joint annual review under the sector-wide approach. Interestingly for me, it is not only an auspicious occasion, it is a unique opportunity to be participating in this meeting event with my redeployment from the Federal Minister of Environment to the Health Ministry in the recent cabinet reshuffle by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu GCFR. I wish to therefore use this opportunity to appreciate President Bola Ahmed Tinubu for this opportunity and to rededicate myself to the service of our country through the enablement of Mr. President. For me, health sector, for me, the health sector deployment is a homecoming, as my passion for a change in the narrative of the Nigerian healthcare delivery system have taken me to several parts of our country, either as a practicing physician, a health activist, or an active contributor to the health sector policy initiative that drive progress particularly at the sub-national level. I must also say that my experience in the last 15 months in the environmental sector is a good opportunity
to strengthen our sector-wide approach with multi-sectoral collaboration and frontally address other determinants of health outside the immediate purview of the health sector. Your Excellencies, Coordinating Minister, Honorable Commissioners, Permanent Secretary, and our esteemed guests, let me especially appreciate all the efforts that have gone into preparing for this sector-wide approach joint annual review that gives our health system the crucial stakeholder cornerstone on the baseline to appraise the compact endorsed by all of us as the new way of doing the health sector business. Now that you are here with the sector-wide approach that ensures Mr. President's renewed hope aspiration to provide prompt, affordable, and sustainable health care to all Nigerians, we must put this approach through the lens of accountability, monitoring, and evaluation to track the progress of our collective agreement to do what is to agree on a baseline on the format of the JAR going forward. Joint annual review is a vital instrument for health sector stakeholders to assess program performance, evaluate resource distribution, and review outcomes or issues that need to be addressed to improve performance. As a critical accountability tool, we shall be using the JAR to promote multi-sectoral coordination and set clear priorities for the upcoming years, ensuring that all stakeholders remain aligned with the national health goals. Stakeholders, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here for the next three days to design for ourselves context-specific, a platform for fostering accountability, enhancing collaboration, and driving progress for the implementation of the Nigerian Health Sector Renewal Initiative. I say context-specific because we must focus on those critical indicators that are the windows through which our health system is addressed, such as mortality rates, disease incidences, service utilization rates, life expectancy at birth, health expenditure, and, and so on. Importantly, the, quali the quality of care that we provide and the client experience when they assess our services must be a top priority as we work together to put them in the upward swing and deliver on the Renew Hope agenda. We are fortunate to have the preliminary findings of the Nigerian Democratic and Health Survey, and we encourage us to have a look at it in developing a baseline for the sector-wide approach. We should explore our current stimulus funding going directly to our primary health care facilities, such as the Basic Health Care Provision Fund and other health financing mechanism to reduce maternal mortality. In addition, the human resource for health crisis and its emerging challenges should be given a thoughtful consideration as we agree on the baseline for the swap JAR towards attaining universal health coverage in our country. Excellencies, honorable ministers, honorable commissioners, our development partners, we are calling for a multi-sectoral collaboration across MDAs, state governments, development partners, private sectors, in the spirit of health sector alignment and support for secure, sustained health investment. Finally, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I wish us a successful deliberation and outcome of this event. Thank you and God bless. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Our brand new Minister of State, can we please give him a very loud round of applause? Thank you, sir. She has been Deputy Governor. She has been Director in the field of public health. A specialist, a calm achiever. And today, she sits on the chair of the Senate Committee for Health, very distinguished Excellency, our next speaker for now, our Senator. Um, this morning I'll say, my woman in red, please welcome with me Senator Banigo Ipalibo Harry, Chairperson, Senate Committee on Health. Thank you. 
Your Excellencies, special guest of honor, the royal fathers, honorable ministers, honorable commissioners of health, our development partners, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen of the press. Indeed, it's a great honor for me, a great privilege that I'm invited to make this special remark as the Senate Chairman of the Committee on Health, Secondary and Tertiary Services of the 10th National Assembly. First of all, let me congratulate the Honorable Minister, the Coordinating Minister for Health and Social Welfare for this very first joint annual review of the Nigeria health sector in our march towards the universal health coverage for Nigeria, Nigerians. I'm delighted that this is taking place for us to be able to find out in the last 15 months of our Sex, sex, se, se, service and sector-wide approach, what has actually worked, what doesn't work, and what we can do better and how we can do it better. And so the review of the compact that was signed last year, where the president in his uh, great vision for a renewed hope for Nigeria was present at this part, at this compact, and all the honorable commissioners were there, and the state governors, and the state governors of the 36 states and FCT were there, and signed to this compact. It is important for us to review, to promote peer review, and find out whether we have made any progress at all, and if we haven't, why? and what should we now begin to do, and to do it better. For us in the National Assembly, we want to say that um, we are quite excited about this accountability framework, because this is accountability at all levels for everybody, stakeholders, government, polit politicians, community people, is accountability. And I'm happy that there is going to be a revised accountability framework which will enhance measurable outcomes so that when we go on our oversights, we're planning to do always doing very robust oversights. We can be able to actually identify where the problems are and what we need to do about it. I also want to congratulate uh, the Honorable Minister and his team for the uh, effective use of our vulnerable group fund that was the first time appropriated in our budget for 2024. And to congratulate them for all the free operations that have been done for the obstetric fistula for our women. So that our women who suffer from this very uh, preventable um, um, obstetric fistula can receive care free of charge, because it's paid for by the VGF, and they can also receive rehabilitation. I personally visited the uh, Fistula Hospital in Ningi, in Bauchi State, and I saw what was happening there. And I'm happy that we begin to see that, this, uh, that what has been appropriated is being utilized appropriately. And that tells us that in the next budget, more funds, more funds should be allocated for VGF and used appropriately. And we, we, are, we are very pleased in, in the, the Joint Health Committee in the National Assembly on your push for the revitalization and strengthening of primary health centers. But we know primary health care is still the cornerstone of our health services. And we need to make sure that funds that are engaged there are utilized, are seen to be utilized 
and get the gains and the outcomes that we are looking to. And so generally, in the National Assembly, in the Health Committee, we are committed to supporting the uh, health policies of the renewed uh, agenda, the renewed hope agenda of His Excellency, the President, and being driven by the Honorable Minister for co of Coordinating and Social Welfare, Ministry of Health, and coordinating, the Coordinating Minister for Health and Social Welfare, and his team. We are determined to support this, uh, the policies and to support it with, not just with our words, but with our backing, with the budgets. And so we hope that this year, that the overall uh, domestic budget to health should be increased much more than what it has been in the past. Uh, we, we had an Abuja declaration for 15%. We are not anywhere near that. But I know this year, we had a little more than what it had been in previous years. And subsequently, we want to see much more domestic budget increase overall for the health sector. So I want to appreciate all of you for being here. This is a very important moment, and I hope that we will go by, we will take away with us something that will change the overall narrative of uh, health indices in Nigeria, particularly the maternal mortality, child health, child health, child and infant mortality, and child death rates in Nigeria. Thank you very much for being a part of this wonderful occasion. Another round of applause for our distinguished senator. She spoke from the heart. We're moving on quickly, and um, we need to set the stage and objectives and expectations in the next three days. I'd like to invite an astute technocrat of public administration and health systems, and today the director of the health plan research uh, Department of the Federal Ministry of Health and Statistics, Dr. Kamil. You can see that he's not even allowing me to introduce him. All right, come to the microphone. You have two minutes. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to stand on existing protocols. The stage is set for the 2024 annual joint, uh, joint annual review of the health sector. We have three objectives and we expect, we have three expectations. Where the first objective is we are going to jointly review the performance of the health sector along the lines of the objectives of the Nigerian Health Sector Renewal Investment Initiative that has been launched and been executed by the current administration with the full buy-in of our Honorable Commissioners of Health and our 36 states and FCT. During the course of the next two, three days, we are also going to facilitate comprehensive discussion to examine this performance and make necessary inputs and recommendations that will uh, speak to what we will discuss in the next few days. And also, is an opportunity for us to deepen multi-sectoral collaboration and input This collaboration across ministries, departments, and agencies that are contributing significantly to the health sector alignment and all that. Thank you. What are our expectations at the end of this discourse that will take us the next three days? It's for us to establish a clear baseline of key health outcomes to measure future progress against the Nigerian health sector renewal investments and initiatives objectives, which we have set for ourselves, which we all agreed to pursue relentlessly. We also want to build a consensus on prioritized actions and stakeholders' role to drive these health sector renewal initiatives. And lastly, for us to enhance this multi-sectoral collaboration to align our support and secure sustainable health investments to, for the benefit of our people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the objectives, three of them and three expectations. 
All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Camille. Our next presenter, quickly, with uh, two minutes, is uh, the National Coordinator Swap Coordinating Office. Young, dynamic, intelligent. Please let's uh, welcome him very warmly. He himself and his team has been able to put this together, working with us for less than two years. Right? You have the mic. Uh, thank you um, very much. I will stand on uh, existing protocols. Uh, I have just two minutes, so I'll try to make it uh, brief. I wanted to take this um, opportunity to do... <laughs> I wanted to um, take this opportunity to uh, first really you know, acknowledge the leadership you know, from Mr. President who signed uh, a compact December uh, last year that outlines our joint accountability framework. The plan through which all 36 states have now adopted through their annual operating plan. So for the first time, I think Nigeria can speak about one plan, which is an important principle of the sector-wide um, approach. I also wanted to acknowledge the leadership, I see the coordinating minister of health, uh, and social welfare, the minister of uh, education, and the minister of state for health, and you know, the leadership of all of our agencies, as well as our national um, assembly uh, st stakeholders. And what we have tried to do with the sector-wide approach really is to improve governance, converge resources, align efforts, and amplify the impact on population health outcomes. And we seek to do this by focusing on one plan, one budget, one report, and one conversation. Over the last year, we have, uh, we have prioritized our ability to implement what we all signed up to. We have had quarterly state dialogues focusing on 40 core indicators that represent our biggest bets in terms of drastically reducing maternal, neonatal, and under five uh, mortality. The sector-wide approach really responds to some of these key structural and systemic challenges. Where we are in terms of accountability, hyper-fragmentation, but having a laser focus on results. We are also excited to announce that the state of health reports that we're discussing today, which is an important milestone that Mr. President offered within this compact is being delivered today. And the joint annual review will be an opportunity to go through these um, indicators and, uh, and, and results. In addition, as part of our one budget, we have worked with most of the partners here to pool resources through um, several you know, joint initiatives that we're going to um, also talk about. Under our one conversation, the joint annual review here, but also through technical working groups, we've been able to um, vet and harmonize our policy uh, making um, abilities. I will stop here, but wanted to you know, join everyone and congratulate everyone for the opportunity to, for the first time, you know, have one vision, you know, one plan, one report, and one conversation for the country. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Dr. Mutaka. At this moment, Your Excellencies all, very, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring on the man of the moment, the Nigerian globalist, bringing the world best practices and resources to the service of better and sound health and welfare to all Nigerians. Together with him, his brother, who has just been elevated and moved on as Minister of Education. Please, let's put our hands together as I welcome the Coordinating Minister of Health and his brother together, the birthed what we are reviewing today. Please, let the applaud be, be very loud. These are the young Nigerians. Thank you. Okay. I, I think um, I'll let my brother, who is the Minister of Education, who will be doing our work of health in education to start first. So, our Minister, maybe you can go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Coordinating Minister. And I won't take that much time because we, we're running, we have to go to FEC in the next 30 minutes. Um, it's just very delightful to see this day. It was when we were starting about um, a little bit about one year ago, it was like, like if this was going to be impossible.
but with the sheer determination, commitment, dedication, and perseverance of the coordinating minister, we're seeing this today. Please let's together give him, give him a sound, a long, a long round of applause. Thank you, and it was a party for what you've done and what you continue to do for our country. Now, what is SWAP? SWAP is aligning our resources, harmonizing our efforts, and with joint accountability review. And when you put all these three components together, what do you get? You get the maximum, maximum effect of your investment from on the X sector. Now, we're going to see the numbers today. At least we have baseline data to review. Because before all these our data were not validated. We don't even believe our own data. But now we have some data to review. And um, during the course of the next few days, we'll uh, be talking together and coming up with the next plan. So I thank everybody for coming. And it, this is a really, a really big thing, a landmark achievement. Congratulations to everybody, everyone that has worked so hard to get us to this place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellency, the guest of honor, His Excellency, the governor of Imo State, uh, the only hope of the nation, I believe that's what the Vice President called him, uh, Senator Hope Ozodima, who is representing all the 36 state governors. My boss in the legislative side, Senator Banigo, who is chairman of the Joint Committee of the National Assembly, chairman of the House Committee on Health. My brothers, the Honorable Minister of Education and the Honorable Minister of State for Health, our royal fathers, royal majesties that are here, the honorable commissioners of health that are here, and our esteemed development partners, the DGs, heads of agencies, members of the ministry, ladies and gentlemen, may I crave to stand on the existing protocol given the time that has passed. Uh, before I say much, I will say I'd like to really acknowledge the collective effort that has brought us to this day where we're having the first joint annual health review. And yes, we have an amazing team, Dr. Muntega and his team, but this will not have been possible without the intense, close, collaborative effort, the co-creation with all the 36 state commissioners of health. And Dr. Banji Filani, the chairman of the Commissioners of Health Forum, I want to specifically acknowledge your leadership along with all the 36 commissioners of health and the mandate secretary of the FCT, right from Ekiti to where we are today. I really commend you for your leadership, for your perseverance, and for your leaning with us to co-create this momentum in the Nigerian health sector today. So thank you, and thank you very much. And our development partners will be very patient uh, with us as we undertake this journey of really leading and showing Nigeria's priorities, and you have been very supportive the bilateral partners, the multilateral partners, the philanthropic organizations, the global health initiatives, we really thank you so much. And it is with great honor that I welcome all of you to this first health sector-wide joint annual review where we interrogate our performance over the last year and launch interventions to address the identified challenges and recommit ourselves to improving the health of all Nigerians. Let me specifically use this occasion also to express our profound appreciation to His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinubu GCFR for his incredible and visionary leadership, placing the health and social well-being of Nigerians as a core part of his renewed hope agenda. Because the future of prosperity that he envisions requires a healthy, productive, Nigerians. It requires us to harness the human capital. And I'm glad that my brother is now the Minister of Education. will drive that with all the gusto that we can. I thank the President, who has recognized that good health is core to harnessing Nigeria's greatest asset, our human capital, our population, particularly our young ones. He has demonstrated his commitment to ensuring that all Nigerians are on a path 
to achieving access to improved quality health services without financial hardship by significantly increasing the allocation of the federal government's budget to health and social sectors in 2024. This represents an unprecedented political will and will go a long way in addressing the financial gaps that have so far limited Nigeria from achieving an efficient, equitable, and quality health system. In the last one year, based on the data-driven diagnostic assessment of the health sector, we had developed the strategic blueprint with an overall goal to save lives, reduce both physical and financial pain, and produce health for all Nigerians. The blueprint comprises of four pillars of governance, improving population health outcomes to a health system, but also taking into account the preventive and promotive efforts to balance our efforts with a multi-sectoral mindset, which my brother, the Minister of State, has just alluded to, to bring that in a holistic manner to improve Nigeria's population health outcomes and to unlock the healthcare value chain and strengthen health security. The blueprint underpins the effort that we're making, but also the approach that we're taking collectively. And the president launched the initiative and we signed the compact, which endorses the presentation of the annual report and the state of health report of all Nigerians. And for the first time, we are now fulfilling these two commitments of having the review, but also having the state of health report, which will be reviewed here. For every single commitment that we have so far made in the compact, we have had milestones as a result of those, which today we are announcing that we have made significant progress. And I'll mention a few. By quarter three of 2024, we've already met 31 out of 41 KPIs across the presidential commitments and are on course to surpass all our targets for 2024. The BHCPF 2.0 reform uses equity considerations now in distributing financial and human resources to over 8,000 primary health care centers through direct facilities. And 45 billion Naira has already been disbursed through direct facilities to the states and uh, to uh, serve our population. We mobilized with our partners more than 3 billion in terms of complementary funding over three years, and including 2.1 billion that we have confirmed over time, which will complement the federal government's effort. And in the last year, several facilities have been revitalized uh, already, and 2,006, 2,600 are currently being uh, uh, at late stages of being upgraded through the states. And these are resources that we know will also help make our primary health care centers functional. And two additional thousand facilities will also be revitalized as, as part of this effort. As a demonstration of the president's commitment to improving the health workforce, we announced 120,000 frontline health workers to be retrained. More than 40,000 have so far been retrained, and we are on our way to meet and exceed the target. And through the SWAP coordinating office led by Dr. Muntega, all the states have now developed their AOPs, costed them with gaps identified. So for our partners, that's the basis for aligning with us. On key population health outcomes, under five mortality, looking at the DHS data, has reduced by 16.7% uh, from 2018 to late 2023 when the DHS was conducted. Um, significant improvement in infectious diseases ranging from 40% reduction in diarrheal diseases, 24% reduction in TB, 12% in HIV. This is as a population. It's between the two DHSs, 2018 and 2023. So despite the pervasive sense uh, that there are difficult challenges, but Nigeria is beginning to move, which with this uh, uh, political commitment, we can accelerate that in the right direction. And 17 states have already shown improved performance of model contraceptives and six have already doubled and i'm pleased to say his excellency the governor of emo state who is here his state is one of those states that has made demonstrable performance improvement in model contraceptive as well as in state health insurance and following the executive order signed by the president we know that at least 40 businesses have placed business cases to invest in local manufacturing and we've signed an MOU with Afrexim back for a billion dollars credit line through the Afrexim. And our health security is also making progress. 
And in terms of perception, based on the survey that we conducted, the perception of Nigerians has improved. About half Nigerians has endorsed the trajectory of the Nigeria's health system in the direction that the president is taking us. And more than half are confident of the government's capacity to effectively manage health emergencies. An increase of 17% compared to 2023 People's Voices Survey. The same thing applies to quality of maternal and child health services. Not perfect, but it's beginning to improve. The perception of poor quality is beginning to show a downward trend, mild as it may be. So it's not all doom and gloom, but we can also not relent on the basis of this performance. There are many areas that we have to improve. For instance, affordability of care. Despite the improvement that we have seen on health insurance on the public side, we need to do more to make healthcare affordable to Nigerians. And the DG NHI is working tirelessly towards that. Broader elements of quality of care, the respectful care, and the user experience, which we know that there is some progress, but we do need to do a lot more. The coverage of children with zero dose, we've seen an uptick, and we need to work harder to bring down the zero doses and to increase our routine immunization, given the tepid, mild increase that we have seen between the two DHSs. The rate of stunting is also another area, malnutrition. We've seen an uptick, and we need to double down on those areas. And in response to these numbers, it is not just about the numbers. There are people, there are families, there are children, there are women, there are poor persons, and people being pushed into poverty because of that. So it's not about the statistics, but that there are people and families and communities affected, and we respect that. And we will double our efforts in response to those findings in line with the President's agenda. Specifically, in response to the unacceptably high maternal mortality, we've identified the 174 local governments all over Nigeria that account for 50 percent of maternal deaths in Nigeria. And we developed the Maternal and Newborn Mortality Reduction Investment Initiative as a specific response how we want to crush maternal mortality in this country. And it is possible, given what we have seen in terms of the direction of our travel. The State of Health report shows that if we still have challenges, particularly with data sources and also in execution, but we will work our way through those and we commit to ensuring that we have single source of truth in terms of good quality information to tell us where we are and to improve our investments as federal government, but with the states alongside us. And we will continue to have joint reviews, the performance dialogue with all the states. And I call on my colleagues, the Minister of Finance, Minister of Budget, and I know the DG of Budget was here, that in 2025, the health sector, and I dare say the education sector, and other social sectors need to continue to enjoy this increase in domestic budget. Just as we call on all state governors to particularly look at 2025 budget and allocate more resources to the health sector and to other sectors that have bearing on improving population health outcomes. I will call all of us to action because the task ahead of us is huge, but it requires our collective efforts and we can do this through genuine partnerships that are respectful. We call on all of government and all of society approach, including our development partners the Friends of Nigeria, to continue to work with us, to be patient with us as we chart a path towards improving the health of all Nigerians. From the federal government, I assure you the President is very committed to continuing prioritization of health in line with the principles and commitments of the sector-wide compact that we signed. To our state governors, I really would like to commend all of the state governors for their leaning in, especially in the last 15 months, to work with us uh, Your Excellency, can you convey our appreciation to all the 36 state governors for their attention to primary health care, immunization, nutrition, and other areas working with us very closely. And to our development partners, I really want to also single you out to appreciate you as well for your efforts in making those shifts towards the swap behaviors uh, and the code of conduct. We seek stronger convergence of our financing and your financing of the technical support towards our priorities, recognizing that we have revamped annual operational plans developed by the state's bottom-up and that the priority 172 legal governments are already identified for crushing maternal mortality. And all of you have a role to play in this. 
And following our resource coordination and portfolio review, we also ask our development partners to individually share with us, with the Swap Coordination Office, their roadmap for strengthening the alignment as part of this compact. And for our citizens, in line with the President's overall direction, we want you to hold us and your state governments and local governments accountable for providing improved quality health services and basic services that we need as a people to create a healthier nation. We also recognize the efforts of our past health leaders. There are several ministers of health whose work we are building upon, from Olikoi Ransom Kuti to Eitai Lambo to late Professor Oshochi Mehin to Professor Onyebu Chichuku, who I believe is coming here or is already here, uh, to Professor Isaac Adewole, to uh, Dr. Osage Ohanire, who we expect to be part of this joint review. They have sent their videos, and some of them will be with us. We're building on the legacy of several ministers of health that have come before us, and my colleagues, uh, Dr. Arausa, as well as the current minister of state, and many of us, and many leaders across different agencies. So we're building the institutions in health, but building on the work of so many others who have come before us. And I would like us to really uh, take a moment to appreciate all of them and the numerous health workers all across our country who have spent time, effort, whether on polio, whether on diphtheria, or delivering women over time, and that will continue to build on their efforts. During this review, we are also joint launching the not only the state of health report, but the public perception survey that we have conducted. Alongside, we are launching the health vulnerability and adaptation report, which sets our core priorities over the coming years to address the consequences of climate change and health, because it's so important that we think about the challenges of our future. And I'm so glad my colleague, the Minister of State, is coming from environment, and this report is coming at a very good time because as we improve population outcomes, we also need to look at the intersection with climate. And we are also launching that as part of this joint review. And I would like to say that the lives of Nigerians, particularly women and children, is at stake, and the poorest among ourselves. We must do everything we can to safeguard them, and we will be relentless in our resolve to deliver an efficient, equitable, and quality health system for all Nigerians. By the grace of God, we, we shall succeed in doing so. And I want to thank again the President, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. May I also just, while I have the podium, say that the State Health Scorecard, this is a scorecard for every state of the Federation based on the DHS data, which disaggregates the performance and color courts it. It's not to judge on any state, but to show where we are so that we can work towards improving them. And we had shared this with all the states uh, a, a week ago, and we urge all Nigerians to use this as a basis of dialogue, not to judge, but for learning what is working and what is not working. And this report is also available. The State of Health report, this is the JAR edition of the State of Health report. We will use the input and we'll review it chapter by chapter as part of the joint annual review. After the joint review, the team We'll revise it and we'll finalize it to present to His Excellency, Mr. President, and to the leadership of the National Assembly, as well as broadly to all Nigerians, so that we know where we are today. So thank you once again, and I wish us all a very productive joint annual review. Thank you. Very explicit, very insightful, and is carrying all of us along. We all have full responsibility going forward and changing the narrative for the health sector in Nigeria. Another very loud round of applause for the coordinating Minister of Health. Your Excellency is all very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. This, like the coordinating minister have said, cannot be achieved in Abuja the sub-national becomes the imperative to making a new wave for health sector to work for the people in Nigeria. The Nigerian Governors Forum have been very, 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 very supportive of this. 
We recall that they have signed on to swap and they are very eager to, to change the situation in health care. And so in the spirit of hope, renewed hope, as presented by Mr. President, is a man whose name is Hope and has lived up to it. I'd like to bring on the representation of the Nigerian uh, Governors Forum, the chairman who is not with us but is with us, a man, his people have noted him for his charisma and passion. No wonder they gave him a landslide victory. Thank you very Congratulations, you. Your Excellency. Thank you very much. The distinguished Senator Banigo Ipalebo Hari, Chairman Senate Committee on Health. Your Excellency Professor Ali Pate, Coordinating Minister for Health and Social Welfare. Dr. Tunji Alausa, Honorable Minister for Education. Dr. Isiak Adekunle Salako, the Minister of State for Health. Permanent Secretaries, indeed the Management of Federal Minister of Health. Not forgetting Honorable Dennis Idahosa, Chairman, House Committee on Health. And other members of the National Assembly in our midst. I want to acknowledge the presence of the critical stakeholders in our midst. For want of time, I will also acknowledge the special advisor to Mr. President on health, and then the Committee of Commissioners of Health from the various states of the Federation. Our royal fathers, I greet all of you, and all the development partners, such as the WHO, UNICEF, NHIS, NACA, and the other organizations, distinguished invited guests, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very highly delighted to address you today on behalf of the Nigerian Governors Forum in place of the chairman who is unavoidable absent. The occasion of the joint annual review of the health sector which is being organized by the Federal Ministry of Health under the leadership of our dear brother, Professor Mohammed Ali Pate, the Coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare. Let me begin by commending the Honorable Minister for his visionary leadership, resourcefulness, spirit of partnership, since assuming his role as the Coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare. The level of cooperation we are witnessing now under his leadership between the Federal Ministry of Health and the subnational government is unprecedented and very impressive. No wonder, as you are aware, the current Minister of Health is one of our best and brightest in Nigeria with a global name recognition. This close collaboration is vital to achieving the progress we so urgently need in Nigeria's health sector. And I encourage the minister to continue in this direction. One of the landmark initiatives introduced by the federal government to enhance synergy and efficiency in the health sector is the sector-wide approach, SWAP, which promotes one budget, one plan, one conversation, and one report. This approach was further solidified by the signing of the Health Sector Renewal Compact by President Bola Ahmed Tinimbo, the Coordinating Minister of Health, all the 36 governors, and our development partners on December 12, 2023. The signing of this compact is a powerful demonstration of our collective commitment to universal health coverage and underscores the critical importance of collaboration 
between the federal government, the states, and local government areas to achieve our health goals. The recent results of the Nigerian Demographic and Health Survey reinforce why this collaboration is essential. Although there have been some improvements in health indicators, particularly in reducing under five and infant mortality rates, these figures remain unacceptably high. Moreover, we have seen worsening trends in neonatal mortality and malnutrition. These statistics highlight the urgency of our work and make the signing of the Health Renewal Compact timely and crucial. We must continue to work together, recognizing the unique challenges each state faces. While maintaining our shared focus on achieving better health outcomes for all Nigerians, I would also like to commend the Federal Minister of Health for his continued effort to translate the compact into action. The series of engagements carried out across the all 36 states have ensured that key stakeholders are aligned on the sector-wide approach and understand the roles in its success. The recent joint performance dialogue held in June 2024, along with the support given to ensure that the 2025 annual operational plan aligns with the health sector strategic blueprint are further evidence of the ministry's commitment to keeping subnational governments engaged and focused on a common agenda to strengthen our healthcare system. It is also worth noting the, to note the critical role being played by our development partners in supporting the sector-wide approach, their cooperation is critical towards reducing program fragmentation and maximizing resource efficiency. I am confident that our partners will continue to bring best practices from other countries, particularly those with governance systems similar to Nigeria's, to help strengthen our approach. Today's joint annual review marks another important step in advancing one conversation element of the swap. This review provides a valuable opportunity for all levels of government and our partners to jointly assess our progress, reinforce best practices, and identify corrective actions where needed. It is through this shared commitment to accountability and transparency that we will continue to push forward towards achieving our common goals. We therefore encourage us all to engage in open, candid discussions, compare insights, and learn from one another. Before I conclude, I wish to reiterate the commitment of the Nigerian Governors Forum to the intent and spirit of the Health Sector Compact. The role of the Nigerian Governors Forum has been clearly outlined, and I want to assure my dear brother, the Honorable Minister, and all stakeholders that we will continue to honor our commitments. We also expect that all partners will do the same. On our part, the Nigerian Governors Forum Secretariat is diligently tracking the NGF's commitment through a scorecard, which keeps all governors informed about the progress of the implementation. Finally, I want to thank all of you for your dedication and collaboration in improving healthcare for Nigerians. Together, we will build a more resilient, more inclusive, and more effective healthcare system that meets the needs of our people. I want to thank you, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you all. Our Imo, 
Your Excellency, thank you so very much. Thank you for the assurances to keep on keeping. Another round of applause before we, uh, the, some of the ministers will leave us for FEC. Can we quickly have a group photograph here? Can we have a group photograph? First front row, please. A group photograph. Can we have a royal father's seat? 